come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everybody to our celebration of the third Sunday of Advent. Gaudate, our rejoicing Sunday. We think in Advent with the purple that it's like a penitential season. But uh, although there's always a need for penitence, there's always a need also for rejoicing. We've always something to rejoice in. We're not rejoicing particularly in ourselves, but rejoicing in God. And to mark that, we've got a pink candle as the third candle on our Advent wreath. And I light that now as we begin this celebration. So let's just think what we have to rejoice in, all that God has done for us. Particularly he's given us the gift of his son. He's given us salvation. All these gifts he offers to us. But at times we don't appreciate them. We don't open ourselves to receive them. So aware of that, we seek forgiveness. But we rejoice always in his love and salvation. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, my soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The almighty works marvels for me, holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. My soul rejoices in my God. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty handed. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks to God. Because... This is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace Make you perfect and holy, and may you will be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. 
द वर्ड ऑफ द लॉर्ड गॉस्पल अक्लमेशन आल लोहिया आल लोहिया द स्पिरिट ऑफ द लॉर्ड हैज बीन गिवन टू मी He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light. only a witness to speak for the light this is how john appeared as a witness when the jews sent priests and levites from jerusalem to ask him who are you he not only declared but he declared quite openly i am not the christ well then they asked are you elijah i am not he said are you the prophet he answered no So they said to him who are you we must take back an answer to those who sent us what have you to say about yourself so john said i am as isaiah prophesied a voice that cries in the wilderness make a straight way for the lord now these men had been sent by the pharisees and they put this further question to him Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ and not Elijah and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stand stands among you unknown to you the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany on the far side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ so as father john said at the beginning of mass this sunday the third sunday of advent is gaudete sunday rejoice literally it means rejoice and so our theme this week with our third candle is that that concept that feeling that virtue of joy and i have to admit it can be pretty difficult for a deadpan mancunian to to exude the joy to to convince people of being joyful inside almost because when we think of the word rejoice and joy that all those images come to our head those images of maybe the happy happy joy joy and always smiling and and all that kind of thing but we also know from our now un- our un- better understanding of mental health that that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a deep seated joy in that person often we know that stand up comedians for example will suffer depression away from the stage and the only time that they switch it on so to speak and appear happy and make people laugh is on stage so that's worth bearing in mind because as with all these words the original christian concept of joy goes much much deeper i don't mind sharing with you uh, my friend and i both of us from manchester both now priests when we were studying in rome we had to laugh because our uh, reports one year we we knew that there were probably that section of our reports were probably written by the same person because it was the same theme i was described as sometimes dour I had to look that word up and how to pronounce it and uh, my friend was called stern now people who know us probably know that's not the case because we both have deadpan sense of humor and i think that's a very mancunian thing where sometimes people don't know if we're joking or not the sarcasm sardonic sometimes has been used of mancunians as well just not knowing whether we're joking or not so that's one thing we have as mancunians and also it's all about personality sometimes someone can just be bright and breezy and 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 obviously joyful but what i want to preach about today is that joy that comes from jesus that joy that's inside all of us that joy that sustains us that keeps us 
going throughout our lives. And that joy, of course, is based on the knowledge that we are loved uniquely by God, as if we're the only person that's ever been created and that we have salvation promised to us. Because we heard about it in the first reading in Isaiah. That's it was all about joy. It says, I exult in God, I rejoice, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. And before that, we had that wonderful uh, phrase that Jesus himself reads in the synagogue and uh, part of his life. You know, he gets up and reads from the scroll and he has a drop the mic moment when he uh, puts, folds the scroll up and he says, the Spirit has sent me to bring good news to the poor. The Spirit has anointed me. He sent me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and so on and so forth. It's that, that's the good news. That's the joy that comes to us. The hope, we talked about hope two weeks ago. We live in that hope that there's always something better that we're called to, and that is to share our life with Jesus. That no matter what is thrown at us in our life, and joy sustains us as well. So hopefully... You know, sometimes uh, I, I promised one Lent that I would smile more, uh, which is always a good thing for everyone. But sometimes we may not appear to be smiling on the outside, but there is that joy that sustains us all the time, knowing that we are loved by God, knowing that, that he's proclaimed liberty to captives. We may feel, you know, imprisoned by something in our lives, whether that's an addiction or something that's going on in our lives, but we, we have the hope and the joy that it's going to be better. That's where we found, that's what we're rejoicing about today. As Father John said, we, we think about what's going on in our lives and our natural reaction is to give thanks in a joyful way. And then that does rub off on everybody else. So we shouldn't go around, you know, as if, you know, we, we uh, have no hope and no joy. We shouldn't be going around like that. Like, maybe like Uriah Heap, that I'm ever so humble kind of attitude. But we do have to exude that joy. I remember that phrase as well. Someone said, um, give your face a joy ride, that kind of thing as well. We do have to do that sometimes. But hopefully, just by the way we live our lives, by the way we interact with each other, we show life, we can shine that light of Christ, just like John the Baptist did in his life. He was not the light, but he pointed to the light. He pointed to Jesus. And so that's where our joy shines forth. The way we treat other people, the way we see Jesus in them, and just living our vocation, our mission that's been given to us by God day in, day out. So that's true joy, and that is what sustains us. So rejoice and give thanks today for the fact that Jesus is working in our lives. So together now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, only begotten Son, Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the, and the life, life of, of the world, world to come. Amen. So we pray together our prayer of the faith. The response is, fill us with joy. Fill, fill us with, with joy. joy. 
Lord, we pray for the leaders of the church, our government and the nations of the world, that their wisdom and understanding will fill people with hope for a better future in the fairer world. Lord, in your love, fill us with joy. Lord, we pray for those who have wandered away from you and the love of families and friends, that a change of heart will lead them to search for those they have lost and rediscover the joy of love and, re and reconciliation. Lord, in your love, fill us with joy. Lord, we pray for all Christian people that you peace and joy will grow in our hearts and lives as we serve you and the one another. May we be filled with the joy of your love and gladly go out and share it with the world. Lord, in your love, fill, fill us with joy. Lord, we pray for those who have died that they will be filled with joy of the resurrection as they share your eternal glory. Lord, in your love, fill, fill us with joy. We ask Mary, our mother, to pray with, with you and for us as we say, Hail Mary. Full, Full of grace, the, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art of amongst women, and blessed this is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So we pray for those commended to us, in particular, lately dead. Thelma McGowan, Locke, Pauline Ryan, Eileen O'Malley, Lilo Hassa, Jeff Busby, Mary Wakelin, Eric Pratt, and Coristine. Patricia Gibbons, Manus Thompson, Kitty Coffey, Harry Sparks, Mike Murphy, Thomas Gorarty, Pete Murphy, Mike O'Hare, Jared Keir, Rita Donababand, John O'Donnell, George Wilberforce. Anniversaries, Father Dave McGarry, David Coupe, Anne Freeman, Francis Smith, Kathleen Melville, Joseph Freeman, Mary Lloyd, Theresa Murphy. Sick. Lily, Bridget Spillane, Con McGuinness, Alan Queenan, Anne Rowley, Anna Braganza, Jim Leeming, Catherine Hampson, Claire Nick, Sadie Deegan, Annie Lavin, Pat Coffey, Tommy Joyce, Joan Porter, Bell Family, Jerry Dillon, Loretta Girolami, Andy Bell, Paddy Colbert, Karen and Dave Johnson, Peter West, Tony Hall, Michael Goff, Tommy Farrell, Martin Slayman, Anthony Campbell, Amy Lloyd, Ian Blades, Keith Bannister, Kate Crawford, Sarah Hart, Marie Lloyd Hughes, Anne Leroux, Juliette Lewis, Pat Hallows, Frank Malarkey, Eileen Clark, Anne Bell, Thomas Mitchell. All those affected by the coronavirus. Have special intentions for a daughter, a birth remembrance for Jim Brennan. And Claire Neary is now deceased. She died today. We remember her especially in our prayers. We make all our prayers together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. May the praise and glory of his name, name for our, our good, good and the good, good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, in the, the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit all, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Say to the faint of heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, our God will come and he will save us. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few things to draw to your attention. The uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day masses are now fully booked up, I'm afraid, in these limited times when we could only have 70 or thereabouts at each Mass. But there's plenty of room still on the St. Stephen's Day and on the Holy Family the Sunday, and they'll all be celebrated as Christmas Masses. So please, if you've not managed to get to one of those, come to one of the others. As you know, we're not required to attend any Masses under the present circumstances and no obligation. But do come to those. It'd be great if we can celebrate those as great Christmas Masses as well with a good turnout. I found myself and Father Michael were a bit amused last Sunday that there were very limited numbers in the church, even nothing like 70. You know, I know there was no heat on in the church, but I uh, thought, well, all these people are wanting to come, but not evidently at the moment. So it'd be great to see you all on that uh, St. Stephen's Day and the Sunday as well, good numbers uh, celebrating Christmas over those days. Um, also, the heating is now working. You may have heard a bit of banging and drilling during this mass that's the workman just putting the finishing touches to it but you'll be delighted to know there is heat in the church so come along and you will be warm when you join us in church hopefully warm in both ways and just mentioned that next week's newsletter um, the 20th is a two-week newsletter there's no newsletter for christmas uh, weekend so please do get any message you want to be in for christmas in um, for our next um, well, next Friday we normally print them off or early Saturday. Please do get any mass intentions in uh, before next Friday morning, please. So thank you for sharing and celebrating this mass, this rejoicing mass, myself and Father Michael. I don't think he looks too dour, do you? Is it dour or doer? I don't know. A doer or dour, however you <laughs> pronounce it, but I don't think so. I don't think all Mancunians are deadpan and dour, are they? You know. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.